persistence. It's kind of a big deal. We're going to be spending the next several weeks and really kind of the rest of your life <laughs> uh, working on persistence and understanding what it means, how we encourage ourselves to persist, and how to grow it as a habit. Because I'll say kind of in a short term right now, uh, persistence is pretty much involved in any form of success ever. Uh, I could even argue that persistence plays a part in winning lottery tickets at times. So it's kind of a big deal. We'll, we'll get into it in more detail as we go forward, but let's just jump into it. People say, you can achieve anything if you put your mind to it. You've probably heard that many times, either exactly in that way or in sort of slightly different phrases. But ultimately, people say this kind of thing a lot. Now, obviously, it doesn't mean that you can fly without wings or some form of technology just by putting your mind to it. At least nobody's figured out how to do that yet. But objectively speaking, there's been a lot of research into this concept, and really, to some extent, this is quite true in terms of people being able to get really good at pretty much anything if they put their mind to it. But what does it look like to put your mind to it? And why isn't everybody achieving their dreams then? Because if all you need to do is put your mind to it or want something bad enough, then shouldn't more people be achieving their dreams? And honestly, last time I checked, I think most people want to achieve pretty great things. Like, I don't know a whole lot of people that don't and don't want to be happy. And yet, when you look around in the world, you don't see everybody achieving those dreams. So if it's simple as just putting your mind to it, why isn't everybody getting there? Why do we look around and see a certain subset of people achieving great things and a lot of people having less access to it or just not doing it? Well, it's because when people talk about achieving anything if you put your mind to it, they're leaving out a lot. Because they are forgetting to mention things like the 10,000 hours of practice. 10,000 hours, right? There has been a lot of research into this. The number is debatable, but the basic idea is the same, that it takes 10,000 hours of deliberate practice. So not just doing the thing, but hours of practice and getting feedback to get better at something. Right, 10,000 hours. So it's not just by putting your mind to it and then not doing that kind of work. They're leaving out the millions of failures. There is no one who achieves success without failing a whole lot in between. That's where that practice comes in. right? But we don't talk about that. And as a result, when people fail, they think that that means that they cannot be successful and they stop. And then there's the pain. We don't talk about the pain a lot when we're talking about putting your mind to things. Right? But if we're talking about sports, this is literal physical pain. You do not become very successful in a sport without physically hurting at times. In terms of other kinds of achievement, that's, there's a lot of emotional pain in terms of pushing through things that you don't want to, dealing with people not agreeing with you, dealing with uh, a lot of negative criticism and feedback. Right? You do not come to success without a little bit of pain. So how do you really achieve anything? Well, I'm going to show you a quote in a second from someone that I think was pretty good at achieving things. This might date me a little bit because it's Michael Jordan. You all probably want a LeBron James quote, but let's look at it. I have missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the game-winning shot and missed. I've failed over and over and over again in my life, and that is why I succeed. Michael Jordan. So, Arguably, Michael Jordan is the best basketball player that ever played the game. People may argue different ways, but certainly he is one of the top two or three best basketball players that ever play the game. And yet when he's talking about why he succeeded, he's talking about everything he did wrong, all the shots he missed, the games he lost when he was had the opportunity to win it, and all his failures. So why would he talk about that? Well, it's because to really achieve anything by putting your mind to it, what it really means is that you persist, right? Persistence. It means pushing through everything and continuing on even when it's hard, right? You practice all the time, especially when you don't want to, right? When you find it boring, when it's no fun at all, when it hurts, you practice. That is persistence, and that is the difference between putting your mind to something in a very uh, partial way and not being very successful and putting your mind to something and being successful is that persistence, right? Practicing when you don't want to, 
when it's not fun, when it hurts, etc. But this is the key. You want to practice smart. You want to plan ahead and know that it will get difficult, right? Persistence is something, it's willpower, right? You can persist through things without being very smart about it. It is possible, but it makes it a whole lot easier if you plan ahead, especially about those things that you really want to be successful at but are difficult for you right now. All right, so that's what we're going to be talking about going forward. We're going to go through some different ways that will help you persist in the face of things getting tough. Right? Everything from getting support, coaching and emotional, which means coaching and feedback, somebody who can tell you how to do things better and show you, someone who's been through it, uh, things like that, and emotional support, right? which is also you can get emotional coaching. But I'm also talking about building support systems. So there are people there. So when things are hard, you have somebody to talk to, someone to keep your morale up and to tell you you can do it when you don't believe that, when you're having a hard day, when you're really hitting the wall. Right? You need support. You also need to set goals. We've been doing this a lot, but you need to plan how you will overcome obstacles in advance. That's why we've been doing this stuff, because when it gets hard, your normal reaction is going to be to quit. Right? So if you haven't set a goal, if you don't know what you're working towards, and you haven't decided how you're going to overcome the obstacles as they come up, it's going to be much more likely that you quit and that you do not persist towards success. Right? And finally, you have to be aware of what you tell yourself, right? When things get hard, we often are our worst critics. We tell ourselves, oh, you can't do this. You're so dumb, right? The, you're not good at this. Other people are good at this. You're not supposed to be doing this, right? And we quit, right? We tell ourselves some terrible things. Or, you know, the most successful people tell themselves something different, and we'll tar start practicing that so that we are able to persist again in the, in the things that are hardest for us at the most difficult times. But it all starts with reflection. So in a moment, you're going to get a chance to reflect on the times when you have persisted, because we all have. We've all pushed through hard times to be successful in something, whether it's something small or something big. It could be video games. It could be uh, winning a game in a sport. It could be in academics. It can be in pushing through and supporting a friendship or family members, right? We've all persisted through something. So we're going to start with reflection on what we have done and what worked for us, and then we're going to start applying it to some other things and learn some of these other skills. So let's get ready to go and start getting ready for those tough times and persisting through them.